correspondent uh, joining us in the KUM News, uh, Link Zoomer. He does actually have a special report coming up, but I wanted to kind of unpack uh, this episode of Pacific Matters. And he's also got a little bit about American Song Contest, which is a, it's a huge night uh, for the region. And we'll get to that. Uh, huge coming, night. Yeah, huge we'll, night. We'll get to that coming up, uh, um, Tomas. But but just the way that the uh, uh, customs director, uh, uh, Chief Moffness, uh, spoke about taking the epidemic of crystal methamphetamine personally. The thing he said about, for him, it was so embarrassing that there was so much meth in the CNMI that it was kind of like the impetus that it lit a fire under their doggins, right, to, to get moving. And they have made a lot of uh, a progress with the uh, crystal methamphetamine. But I just wish that we had a similar mindset here because uh, here it almost seems like it's the thing that we don't uh, talk about. And I got to say, you know, with the pandemic response uh, and with the response to crystal methamphetamine, it seems like we here on Guam need to follow uh, the NMI's lead. Uh, and so I, I just wanted to note that that really resonated with me. That, And I think that's what we need. We need... You know, our our elected leaders, our, our law enforcement, and I know many of them do take it, you know, personally, right? Because we should be embarrassed that this great island community that we know and love, um, that crystal methamphetamine has cast its long, dark shadow on, on this island. And I, I, yeah. just, I felt it was really good to hear uh, somebody in government talking like that, Tomas. Right, Chris, and it's something that he acknowledged uh, but didn't uh, really delve into, talking about the politics of, of the issue. Uh, you saw him there talk about, you know, struggling to find words and how to describe it, and he eventually yeah. just said, said uh, you know, there are politics involved here. Uh, I wanted to just sit down with him, uh, Director Moffness, and have a conversation about what its impact is in the community. Uh, because oftentimes, right, when you see these stories about ICE, they're about bus, they're about arrests. Uh, but what is the long-term impact? Um, and, 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 you know, we're, we're starting to unpack that here, at least in the NMI, uh, as he said, as early as 2013 or 2015, uh, when they decided to make their, those major changes. Um, and uh, love what he said about from toothpicks to Mercedes Benz, uh, they're, they're looking at it all. And uh, I didn't expect to get a look of behind the scenes, but there are a lot of clips in there of uh, the team unpacking and uh, up, uh, uh, you know, pulling apart packages there. If you look throughout the the, yeah. the episode, yeah. uh, and so that's the work that's happening. It's literally hands on, eyes looking at these packages. Yeah. The yeah. most recent bust here in the NMI was about five pounds, the largest uh, that they've been uh, able to find in recent memory. So, uh, lots of work there. I do know that he's met with uh, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero uh, at some point uh, during his. Uh, I guess wow, it's uh, almost uh, over two decade career and. Uh, that's also why I wanted to sit down with him uh, after he made the announcement of the bus, because uh, like he said, he's been in this uh, work since 1998. So uh, lots of uh, knowledge there. And again, if you weren't able to catch the full show, it's up on our YouTube and Facebook page. So Yeah, I think it sends a message. That's what I think. And that's one thing I think we're missing here is that that whether it's, you know, war on ice or, you know, ice will shatter your life or or whatever that message is, I feel like there, there's always got to be a message running about about crystal methamphetamine. I think the message in your interview was that, hey, we're watching the bad guys and we're doing something about it and there are cons consequences. Yeah, um, and uh, we got a chance to meet some of those cadets and uh, everyone's life has been touched by this drug in, in one way or, or another. And these cadets are um, answering the call to action and uh, coming home, uh, wanting to serve this role. Uh, as he passionately put it, obviously he says that uh, they're the first line of defense in, yeah. in his view uh, for, for the public, for public safety. Um, and I, I think uh, sometimes, at least for me, when you think of customs, uh, you don't see them out on the streets, right? So you don't necessarily uh, think, you know, you, their work is less visible from the day to day. But I do remember even growing up, I mean, if I were even to pick up a uh, you know, if we ordered paper towels or something from the post uh, and it came through the post office and it was more than one package of paper towels, the customs would stop me and ask me if I was running a business. I remember that growing up. <laughs> and so uh, that's how tight the operations are. Uh, so um, it was great to get more background and learn from uh, uh, Director Moffin that has so much history there. Yeah, that was uh, a great uh, interview, uh, Tomas. And I think uh, what I love about it is 
and what I love about your reporting is it really allows us to compare and, and contrast um, the goings on in the CNMI with uh, the goings on in, in Guam. Yeah, and that huge that huge revelation that I didn't even know about that they've been uh, you know hoping to get more information on this, uh, but that they've been intercepting more more ice on Rota because of its close proximity to Guam. That was something I've never heard before, uh, and and he said that. So hopefully we'll be able to shed more light on that too. Thank you. Uh, Tomas, we're going to take a quick break and we're coming back with a, a special report uh, with Tomas Maglonia from the CNMI. Tomas, if you could, a little bit about the subject matter of the special report. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we're going to see if the CNMI impeachment hearing will even move forward. That's the question everyone's wondering if it will even. Wait, is, what? After all of this, then now the question is, is this thing going to fly or not? Yes. Okay. Don't go anywhere especially most especially to our CNMI uh, fam. I ran into a guy, Mr. Cabrera, forget his first name, but just so you know, Tomas, Mr. Cabrera loves the job of reporting you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He's, he's from the NMI. He was here on a Guam to visit a family. It's 834. We're coming back with Tomas Manglotnia's special report right here on the link. We're brought to you by Cabo Enterprises, it and and Jack in the Box. Good morning.
Hey, good morning. We did have some uh, comments here. The Jadine comments. They're just not seizing at the port. Too many connections. Uh, David Lazama, the former mayor of Jordan, should stay in prison. Jesse Blas is an embarrassment. Uh, totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, good morning on you guys. 839. Let's go ahead and uh, get into our... Are we playing the slate first, sir? Okay. Well, Tomas McGlotnia of the uh, KUAM News Team. He's our regional correspondent covering all things uh, CNMI with this special report. Tomas, thank you for joining us and good morning. Good morning, uh, Chris and Joe, sir. Yes, uh, major developments uh, once again in the NMI impeachment process. Uh, the Senate and House continues to go back and forth uh, regarding the procedures of the trial of Governor Ralph Torres in the Senate. And now there are two big questions uh, that remain unanswered. Uh, will the Senate really move forward without a House prosecutor? And the second question, is it possible that the Senate will dismiss all the articles of impeachment before the trial even begins. Here's our story recapping the events of yesterday. Tonight, the Senate impeachment trial of Governor Raf Torres is reaching a tipping point. Two major questions loom as lawmakers are on edge. Will the Senate hold a trial without a House prosecutor? And is it possible for the articles of impeachment to be dismissed before the trial even begins? Senate President Jude Hofschneider told KOAM Sunday that they are sticking to the rules, essentially rejecting the House's proposal for a team of five lawmakers to serve as prosecutors. But the senator says the offer to Representative Karina Magolfnia to serve as the lone prosecutor still stands after the Speaker and Impeachment Committee Chair declined the role. In his March 29 letter, Hofschneider gave a stern warning saying that if Representative McGovney fails to file and enter an appearance, the Senate will move forward with the impeachment deadlines and impeachment hearing with or without a House impeachment prosecutor. Last week, House leadership gathered the media to make their case public. We give the next generation the opportunity to a group of legislators down the road that would face this type of uh, injustice. Uh, we want to fight this forward so that we, the fight we, brings we to the, the forefront deep partisan division, further drawing uh, lines in the sand. They, they can't proceed without us. Um, with this effort we are making uh, in terms of pleading with them to to untie our hands and also give us the opportunity to select a team. And the Senate's hands aren't tied either. The last rule in the book, Rule 44, provides a catch-all provision allowing the Senate to change its rules. That's unlikely to happen. Meanwhile, the governor is facing off with the House committee members in Superior Court, challenging the legislative subpoena that he was held in contempt for violating in December. Today, the governor says he's not backing down. I mean, you, you heard both arguments, so I'll just wait to what uh, Judge Bella comes out. Uh, but for me, again, uh, there is separation of branch of government. And so I am sticking to that. Tomas Manglonia for KOM News on Saipan. And Chris, uh, late last night, more major developments. Uh, last night, the Senate Clerk Dolores Bermudez informed House Clerk Linda Munya that the official House impeachment record transmitted to the Senate on March 24, they say, quote, is not in compliance with the trial rules. Now, the House has 48 hours, that means until Thursday at 4.54 p.m. exactly, to correct the House impeachment record. Uh, uh, Clerk Bermudez wrote, quote, after reviewing the entire House impeachment record, I have identified numerous deficiencies that must be corrected, she says. Now, the Senate rules outline a very meticulous process that the House must comply with. That includes having the record be consecutively uh, paginated and requiring a table of contents. In their 35 pages of response to the House, the clerk in the Senate identifies seven of what they're describing as deficiencies in the House impeachment record. And so what this means now is that the House must also correct its table of contents, organize documents in chronological order, explain how standalone documents are related to charges, and even provide more transcriptions for past hearings. And so the clerk concludes her letter by citing the Senate impeachment rule 9E1, which sets the deadline for 48 hours for the House to correct the records. 
And according to those rules, Chris, and this is the interesting part, is that if the house fails to submit the corrected record in that time, then the record shall be automatically stricken and the impeachment matter shall proceed, proceed in the Senate without an impeachment record and the impeachment prosecutor shall not be allowed to appear or participate in the Senate proceedings and the Senate hearing any ma in any matter whatsoever. So if the House record isn't submitted by Thursday at that time, uh, basically uh, the trial will move forward without the impeachment record, the evidence, or even the House prosecutor, someone arguing the case from uh, the lower house. And so the articles of impeachment uh, will be presented to the Senate for that final verdict and judgment in that manner. And so uh, we did reach out to see my House Speaker, Emin Villagomez, and the chair uh, who you might be aware of, uh, of the Judiciary and Governmental Operations Committee, Represent Representative Selena Rabauta. They did not agree, uh, they did not provide comments uh, on the recent developments. However, we're hoping to uh, get a chance to interview both of them today on what the House will do and if the House will meet that deadline or if the House will uh, choose, uh, in effect, to uh, not participate in the Senate impeachment trial uh, happening in the Senate. Uh, however, sources did tell KOAM the House leadership convened on Monday afternoon to, to discuss the matter. So, uh, Chris, this is uh, just another uh, inch forward. Uh, I know the pace of this uh, impeachment process, at least in the Senate, has uh, some might describe it as painstaking, uh, but it, it is uh, moving forward and uh, uh, these questions will be answered uh, at the very latest on Thursday, whether or not there will be a House impeachment record and whether or not there will be a House impeachment prosecutor, which are two vital things in this process moving forward. Wow. Uh, and that people, uh, you know, are now expecting to hear uh, back. And so uh, the House again has 48 hours from yesterday to uh, submit a corrected record. Tomas, how did this get by uh, the House? Well, how did it get uh, by everybody? Were, right. And so they, they received uh, it late last night. Uh, I, you know, I think they're working through it today. Uh, we did, uh, we are working on interviews with House leadership to get their response and what the next steps are. Uh, but yet again, another delay uh, in in the impeachment process uh, that seemingly just can't get off the ground. Uh, we haven't, the trial date hasn't even been set yet, and not even that yet. You know, let alone uh, there's pre-hearing matters to discuss, including the matter of dismissing the articles entirely that the governor's team submitted. So um, uh, it might fulfill the uh, public opinion of uh, this impeachment process uh, reaching into uh, November's election, the general election. Uh, it is uh, it is April, as we all know. And so uh, this process seems to be taking just one step forward and three steps back every mm. single month. Yeah, so, it's like a cha-cha. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll see. And uh, Chris, uh, just shifting gears a little bit because there's also uh, some good news coming out of the cinema. It's a huge night in music. You don't want to miss it. Biggest night I ever. I have not stopped thinking about this uh, American Song Contest since I learned that Sabu was a part of it. Uh, just a brilliant singer, brilliant artist. And we're also going to get to meet some other people involved in the NBC American Song Contest because uh, this is just amazing that we get to share the world stage and all of that is unfolding tonight. So we're going to go to a break, but when we come back, you don't want to miss how the NMI is going to be shining on the world stage tonight on NBC TV 8. Thank you, Tomas. I'm so excited for this. It is a huge uh, night, regionally 847. We're back with more after the Start break. off your middays with the menu on KUAM News Hotspot, your preview to the big news items. Broadcast on KUAM TV 8 weekdays at noon with we'll live stream on our social media platforms, plus an encore at 5 p.m. on KUAM TV 11. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh Garden Bar. Watch Mariana's artists, activists, and visionaries and their quest to protect, preserve, and promote our Chimoto culture on The Culture Club, a weekly feature on KYM News Digital Platform and the KYM News Weekend Edition, brought to you by Tropical Ice. Mmm, new Spicy Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut hurts so good with its spicy marinara ah! and sliced red chilies. It's like a roundhouse kick to the taste buds. How's it looking? Don't be bashful with the fiery flakes now. I want it to be real spicy. I haven't started yet. Okay, I'm ready. The new Spicy Lovers Pizza. Get it while it's hot. You want respect? Red chilies get you respect. No one out pizzas the hut. 
get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Besta Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Big part of the American Song uh, Contest. Team Guam. The team Marianas, Tomas. Team Marianas. Big night tonight. Sabu is taking the stage. We'll be performing tonight, airing on KUM TV8 at 7 p.m. Chris, there are three different ways you can vote to keep him on the show. You're going to want to remember this because we want Savio to stay on yes, the show. That's right. Bota, Bota, Guam, and Rota, and Saipan, too. <laughs> and Tinian. And, and Tinian. Tinian. All right. I'm anyway, there. so there are three ways to vote. Vote via the NBC app, or you can vote online at nbc.com slash ASC vote. And Chris, perhaps my generation's favorite way to vote via TikTok at American Song Contest. Now, you're allowed a, a limit of 10 votes per artist per email or TikTok. So make sure you do it right. It's per email or TikTok account. Uh, but before we get to that, I um, wanted to share this interview we did with Sabu Fresh from when he first learned that he's going to have uh, the complete honor of representing the CNMI in the American Song Contest. Here's a little bit about his background and what he looks forward to uh, taking the stage tonight. Part of the show, um, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, incredible talent in the CNMI and, um, and you know, I just, I feel very fortunate to, uh, to just re be representing and um, sharing my original music with the world. I, I was born in Saipan. Uh, I, I lived, uh, like my family, my mom's side is from Garapan, my dad's side is from Tanapag. Um, and uh, just kind of moved around the island a little bit when I was growing up. And uh, when I was about 10, moved to Hawaii for a few years, and then uh, eventually out to uh, Washington State, which is where I'm at now. So I've just been, you know, going back and forth to, to visit family um, while, I'm, while I'm staying out here and um, uh, just enjoying being back home when I'm there. So. 
Yeah, um, I mean, you know, I, I, I personally don't like the idea of like genres to define my music. So if, if you were to pick one, I'd say world music is, is it. You know, I'd, I'd have such a, a vast uh, influence of different uh, genres and, and artists. My first time on being on such a big stage, you know, so um, just a lot of like communication with the, the producers and then uh, going out to Los Angeles uh, within the, the month here to then uh, get ready for the show. Um, it's a lot of uh, excitement, but you know, it's also a lot of work to be put in. So um, just riding the wave and uh, navigating these seas out here, you know. All right, again, three different ways you can vote to keep Sabiu on the show, which airs on TV8 at 7 p.m. tonight. Vote via the NBC app. Vote online at nbc.com slash ASC vote. And again, vote on TikTok at American Song Contest. Chris, but someone else who gets a vote are the jurors. And each state and territory has their own juror. And we got a chance yesterday to sit down with Dr. Galvin DeLeon Guerrero, who's a well-known uh, filmmaker, uh, uh, performing arts uh, director, and even a long, long as he describes it and told me, uh, he's a longtime DJ since his high school days. Uh, and so he was a, he's a juror for the NMI who's casting votes uh, in this contest as a juror. And so uh, here's our interview with uh, Dr. G. Hafadeh, my name is Galvan De Leon Guerrero, and I am one of the jurors for the American Song Contest being sponsored by NBC, and I'm also the president for Northern Marianas College. There are three things I look for. I look for artistic expression, I look for the hit potential of a song, and I also look for the visual presentation of the artist. Well, you know, we're essentially on the hunt for the next big pop song. And a good pop song expresses emotion and expresses maybe certain values. And, um, you know, we look for how expressive they are in terms of the lyrics that are written, in terms of the harmonies of the song, and in terms of the message, the overall message. The second one is hit potential because, um, you know, when you look at Eurovision, um, some huge hit songs have come out of there, um, including the entire discography of ABBA. So we're looking at what potential is there for this song to be number one on the top charts, number one on the over So we look for that in all the performances. Ever since the days of MTV, your stage presence matters, right? So we also look for like, what is it like for that artist to be on stage? Like, how do they translate the song that they've written, the song that they're performing into, on, onto the stage? And, and how does that mirror the, the lyrics of the song? How does it convey the feeling of the song? And, and, and how does it encapsulate you know, what the artist is trying to achieve through the song. It's amazing overall that all the territories are being included as performers and as jurors. It um, reflects NBC's commitment to diversity and inclusion in a very, very real way. Oftentimes, this, the territories are overlooked, but in this case, the territories are a fundamental part of the competition, not just in terms of the performers, but also us jurors. And, and I. I, I feel honored to be serving alongside Grammy-winning producers who are jurors um, in this panel. So uh, I think it's wonderful that they've reached out and they've included um, the islands and the territories. All right, so there you heard it from uh, Dr. G himself, who again is one of the jurors uh, nationwide uh, casting their votes in the American Song Contest. Chris. I'm going to share it a third time because this is really important. Yes, Again, please do. There are three ways you can vote. It's the NBC app online at NBC.com slash ACS vote and on TikTok at American Song Contest. And Chris, before we wrap, we wanted to share a bit. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Sabu. And so uh, let's uh, go ahead and listen to one of his uh, covers that he uh, shared with us on YouTube. Uh, this one is a cover with one of his uh, friends. Uh, 
covering the song, uh, The Giver. So here's a sob you and a little bit of what you can expect tonight uh, on the American Song Contest. Again, 7 p.m. on TV8. He said when you asked him what genre, he said world music, and that fits right in there with the whole world music, the world right. folk scene, good stuff. And as you saw on Hotspot yesterday, he sang about buffalo this morning. He's going to be singing about sea turtles and sunsets, I think, tonight. And so you don't want to miss it. You don't want to, again, don't don't miss it because you don't want to watch a recording of this. You've got to watch it live, see the cinema unfold in all of Savi's glory. There are three ways, Chris, i got to tell you a fourth time. Vote via the NBC app. Vote online at nbc.com slash ACS vote, ASC vote, nbc.com slash ASC vote. And again, vote on TikTok at American Song Contest. I know I'm going to be glued to all of these three different ways in voting uh, tonight. I really can't wait to see Sabu uh, give it his all. And I know it means so much to him. And uh, online on social media, so many people encouraging everyone to tune in tonight live. So. Again, that is KOM TV 8, 7 p.m. Don't miss it. Thank you, Tomas. Thanks, Chris. There you go, Tomas Maglotnia. Awesome job, as always. Our regional correspondent for the KUAM uh, news team. It's 9.02. Uh, let's do Cover Me, guys. It's brought to you by...